The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Good evening and welcome to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board, send us an email right now. Our email address is instudio101 at gmail.com. And now, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Thank you and welcome everyone to this episode of Down the Garden Path, where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. As landscape designers and gardeners, we think it is important and possible to have great gardens that are low-maintenance and we want to help you make it happen. I'm Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design for the past 11 years. It is a design only business here east of the GTA. With me is my co-host Matthew Dressing. Welcome Matthew. Good evening Joanne. Good evening everyone and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Down the Garden Path. I am Matthew Dressing, horticulturist and landscape designer and owner of Natural Affinity Designs. Natural Affinity is a landscape design and garden maintenance firm servicing Toronto and the Eastern GTA. Joanne and I enjoy doing Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting, relevant and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden. We learn right along with you from each other, from our research and from the guests that join us here on the show. As always, we welcome your questions via social media and email. That's right. And we want to thank you uh, once again for joining us down the garden path. You can always check out past shows of down the garden path on your favorite podcast app, because after the live show, we turn it into a podcast. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new content. And please like, share or even leave us a comment. We would love that. That's right. That's right. So uh, as we make our way through December, the holidays are fast approaching. Um, and I know others say it's hard for them to find me something, but it is sometimes hard to find that special gift mm. for the gardener in your life. What do they have? What are they missing? What do they want or need mm-hmm. for their garden? So tonight, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the gift ideas and garden must-haves for the garden enthusiast in your life. And joining us for the conversation tonight uh, is Kristen Bean Sullivan, Executive Managing Editor of Garden Gate Magazine. So, if you want to join the conversation and send uh, Kristen just a hey and ask a question uh, about the magazine or an item on the list, uh, you know, feel free to write us here at instudio101 at gmail.com. You can also reach Joanne and I always, uh, Joanne at down the number two earth.ca and Matthew at naturalaffinitydesigns.ca. That's right. And let's start by telling you a little bit about Kristen. In her 23 years, 23 years at Garden Gate Magazine, Kristen Bean Sullivan has been lucky enough to meet hundreds, if not thousands of gardeners, tour and photography, tour and photograph countless gardens and learn something from every single gardener she's met. She comes from a long line of farmers and gardeners and tends an ever-expanding urban garden with her husband and three teenagers who are a lot more help in the garden than she was at their age. Well, that's good to know. Welcome (laughs) to the show, Kristen. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, I'm so glad you have teenagers that are helpful in the garden. That's exciting. (laughs) 
Yeah, I definitely was not helpful at their age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, do you want to start off by telling us a little bit more about Garden Gate magazine? Yes, we are um, a magazine in the mostly in the U.S., and uh, we have about 120,000 subscribers across North America. Uh, we cover uh, all things, mostly ornamental gardening, but also some vegetable gardening and indoor gardening as well, but mostly outdoor ornamental topics. And uh, we like to uh, say that we're sort of that friendly voice uh, over the garden gate, helping you uh, learn how to garden, helping you by telling you the plants you should be growing and which ones we've tried and had the best luck with, and then also the techniques that we use um, to grow to grow plants and uh, so they look great and uh, we explore all kinds of design ideas and so we like to inspire people and educate people and uh, help them be successful in their gardens. Oh wonderful well that sounds a lot like what Matt and I are trying to do here on Down the Garden <laughs> Path. <laughs> So I'm, I'm with the right people. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's right. Um, and so it's exciting to know, I mean, this time of year, I know even my son asked me, he said he was stumped on what to get me for Christmas. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> As a gardener, I'm like the easiest one to buy for. Um, <laughs> That's right. There's always something, isn't there? There I know is. I have some, even after all this time, yeah, there's always, something's always new or something's uh, maybe broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, even gar like a good pair of gardening gloves, like, I mean, even the best pair, usually, you know, you need a, another pair the next year kind yep, of thing, or you've lost them. Like I tend to, by at this point I have two, you know, uh, like my left hand and my right hand don't match. <laughs> right. They're both really good gardening gloves. They just don't happen to match because they're, they're, that is, that is the truth. Right. Uh, and then I have several pairs that are in all different, uh, uh, degrees of, sort of worn outness, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yes. So the, <laughs> yep. the pair with one, just one finger worn out, and then the pair that all my fingers are poking out, but I don't know why I'm still holding on to them, but I am. Oh, I do the same thing. So, you just, just don't want to let them go. That's right. Just in case, right? They're your backup yep. backups. <laughs> yep. You never know <laughs> when you might, when I might misplace the good ones. That's right. And, uh, when you're in a pinch, anything will do. Yeah. Yeah. For so, sure. Yeah. So uh, I have a few items on my wish list this well this year as well, and uh, then I have a few things that I've enjoyed b giving and getting both over the years and I've talked to some other people on staff here and they they have some they have some favorites as well uh, we highlighted uh, several of those things on an are in an article on our web that's on our website at gardengatemagazine.com and uh, I think it's probably the first article on the home page there uh, that you can see it's being highlighted right now anyway okay because perfect it's a gift season excellent um, so our but, listeners uh, can that I actually got last year I asked it was on my list last year and I asked for it uh, uh, and I got it actually it was the stainless steel hose have you have either of you tried one of those no I haven't how about you Matt no nope. and uh, we've We've, I, I asked for it after we experimented with it here at our test gardens a couple of years ago, and everyone just raved about it. And uh, so it's a stainless steel hose, but it's, um, and it's extremely lightweight, which is so nice. Um, so if, if, you know, hauling around a heavy hose is, is um, problematic, that uh, this is a great solution to that. And it also coils up really easily. I don't know, have, have you tried, do you have trouble wrangling hoses and getting them kind of wound back up in the nice oh yes uh, absolutely shape. i struggle with yeah, that all the time me too and uh uh this just it's so light that it just it just winds right up it doesn't have that sort of it doesn't kink or get you know like when they get twisted and then it's hard to get them untwisted and back to where they're like they want to coil easily mm -hmm. it just doesn't do that and then um the other thing that i like about the hose and this maybe this might sound strange but um rubber hoses they always sweat and then they um, pick up all the grass and mulch and soil and all kinds of things when you're working with it. And so I end up just covered in sort of mud from the outside of my hose when I'm trying to wind it up again. But the stainless steel hose doesn't do that. So it just it's just so easy to wind up and clean to handle. And uh, I really like it. Really? Why the doesn't the, why doesn't the mud stick to it? It just I, I don't I don't think it sweats like oh. the like the rubber hoses do right yeah 
Okay. So that's kind of interesting. Have you had that? Ha- Does that happen to you too? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. And always yeah. the it gets kinked so easily, you know, especially when you're going yeah. a long distance and you get all the way to where you're going and the water's coming out and you've got to go all the way back and, exactly. and unkink it. So Exactly. Yeah. And this doesn't, that doesn't happen with this. So mm-hmm. that's kind of interesting. I will say it's a smaller diameter, uh, the hose is, than I was used to. So the um, the volume of water coming out of it when I was using my watering wand wasn't wasn't as good okay. with my old watering wand. So then I needed to switch to a smaller diameter watering wand to match up to this uh, smaller diameter hose, and that that seemed to fix the problem. So you could get that sort of rain shower effect um, out of the watering wand. So that's just a small tip. <laughs> that's a good tip. And do you know is it like a five eighths or half inch or even smaller? I think it's a half inch. Okay. I think I could look that up. But yeah, there I you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud you knew that, Matt. That those were the the standard. Uh, you, Matthew, uh, if our listeners are in, Kristen, he is the hard goods manager at a local garden center. So yes, yeah, so all of these materials, right? Yeah. <laughs> all good tips. Yeah. So yeah. I just looked it up, and it's uh, five eighths outside diameter and half inch inside diameter. So. Nice. Excellent. Uh, anyway, have to look so for. that's kind of interesting. And that was, uh, those those range, depending on the length of the hose, they range um, it, from 30 to 90-ish dollars okay. U.S. Okay. Um, and good. let's see, what else? So that was just something I got last year. <laughs> the hoses, though. This is a, a an interesting stocking stuffer for sort of the garden nerd, like I am and I suspect maybe we are you know, might be. Yeah. I don't know. but um do you use uh quick connect fittings on your hoses oh yeah yes i do yeah that's something that um i don't know my husband found those at the hard well if you're a hardware store person then of course yeah so he found them at the hardware store you know 25 years ago and I didn't understand what he was getting at when he bought those for the first time, but wow, they have saved us so much time over the years. The way you can just uh, connect your hoses to the any kind of different fittings or connect hoses together, connect them to the um, to the sprinklers, anything. It just happen. It, it's, it's so easy to make that happen instead of standing there and unscrewing everything every Wonderful. time you want to make a change. So. I, uh, that's a good stocking stuffer idea, actually, for for a gardener in your life. Excellent. And oh, the nice. ones you have listed are actually brass hose connectors. I know the one I use is plastic, which tends to get leaky and drippy. Do you find the they brass? Do. Yeah, the brass ones don't. Well, we started with plastic and have converted over to all brass at our house. Wonderful. And uh, sometimes you still need to get one of those little rubber fittings mm-hmm. inside. That helps. Um, but yeah, the, the plastic ones seem to get really leaky and crack easily. Yeah, yeah. And these brass ones have lasted just for years and years and years now. That's wonderful. So I guess I would recommend brass mm-hmm. to start with. Yeah. 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 Some other, uh, stocking stuffer type ideas are, um, you know, we were talking about gloves. Do you have a, do you have a favorite brand of gloves that you use? I don't know. I kind of where I am and what fits me. Yeah, I think I use a lot of Watson gloves, and I think that's partly because our garden center sells them. Oh, yeah. Well, that's handy. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have really small hands, <laughs> and so you may, you may hear a theme here today in some of that, but I have small hands, and so it's really hard for me to find gloves that fit at, at a lot of garden centers and hard just the, the cheap gloves from the, hard, um, from the, like the home improvement centers. They don't always fit. Okay. And uh, you end with those. You end up with the floppy tips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is not really the best thing. And do you use different pairs of gloves or for different things, or do you tend to use just one pair of gloves for everything? I like the rubber, like having rubber fingers, and I tend to use the same, yeah, for everything. I tend. Yeah. I tend to do, and maybe it's just again garden center work. I have a few different. Uh, gloves and it comes down to the thickness of that rubber okay so if I'm doing heavy duty just everyday stuff I like the th- rubber a little thicker uh, but then uh-huh. I have a stealth brand it's very th- much thinner I can almost do touch screen but I can get a l- I can feel uh, I just have a lot more dexterity and ac- acuity oh, okay. with the fingertips if you're if you're starting seeds for example mm. or yeah um, 
pruning perennials where yes. you need to kind of feel your way around what you're doing. I think those thinner ones, um, is it, I think it's called nitrile maybe, mm-hmm. is that kind of rubbery, um, almost like a, like a kitchen prep glove. Yes, um, yes. yes, very much so. type mm-hmm. glove, yeah. Those are great for that kind of um, finer, finer uh, detail work that you do. I, I like those too. And then I also, I really like um, like a leather glove tips okay. or leather finger yeah. fingers on my gloves for a lot of what I do. And uh, there's a pair, uh, there's a brand called Gold Leaf and they have something called soft touch gloves okay. and they come in a variety of sizes including a small enough size for me and um, the leather is so soft but yet the back of the glove um, is sort of that is a stretchy mesh fabric so it's not so they're really easy to get on and oh, off okay and they're not too hot yes because some leather gloves in the summertime and the rubber gloves too actually yeah. yep. you know they just get so they do yeah. So hot. Mm-hmm. And, and the leather, I I breathe really well. Do that. That's good to know because the leather I find sometimes can be um, a little bit more um, rough, like stiff. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You lose. And yeah. once it and once it gets wet, mm. then they you know they turn into that sort of like a cast almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right when they dry, and that's uh, that's not very fun. No, so that's these, right. These um, don't seem to do that, although. When I'm wearing leather gloves, I try not to um, get them wet. So I try, you know, if I need to water, I usually take my gloves off. Oh, okay. Or if I, um, if it's if the soil's really um, wet and I'm just in a hurry and I'm trying to muck things in mm-hmm. to the ground really quick, which I don't recommend necessarily <laughs> people do uh, yeah. very often. But you know, that's hard on your gloves. That's so right. I try not to use the leather gloves <laughs> for okay. those types of jobs. And there is a company called Woman's Work um, that has also has some really great uh, gloves and lots of other products, but they started as a glove company um, and, and designed gloves just for women um, with the smaller hands and a little bit different proportions. And I've had a pair of their original leather gloves just for years and years, and they've held up really well. They're very sturdy, and but they do get kind of stiff and need to be worked in again after they get wet. So <laughs> that's mm-hmm. something that, um, you know, those are those are good for those really tougher jobs that you mm-hmm. have. And a friend of mine loved their uh, deerskin gloves, which are very soft, mm-hmm. um, but she tended to wear through them every couple of years yeah. because, you know, that's the trade-off for yeah. the, the more sturdy leather versus the really soft uh, deerskin, but uh, super flexible and comfortable to work in. Um, let's see here. What else? You know, one of my favorite tools that I use and have given, I've given this to many people and I wouldn't complain if I got another pair, <laughs> um, is the, the Felco pruners. Uh, oh, yes. I know that's yeah. just an old standard yes. uh, garden tool that mm-hmm. a lot of people have probably. Mm-hmm. But I, again, here's a theme. I have small hands and they have them in different size, different sizes for different, um, you know, fits. And they have a number, the number six is a mm-hmm. smaller, uh, for smaller hands. And that, it, you, it's amazing what a difference that makes um, in terms of comfort and um, usability. Do you do you have different kinds of pruners that you like to use? Yeah, I love the Felco as well. Yes. I mean, yeah. and the, the fact that there's, I and I got a gift last year of the little mini ones. Um, that my oh, girlfriend yeah. gave me and to keep in the kitchen for like cut flowers and, and mm-hmm. things, you know, that you're bringing in the house, like when you're bringing flowers and they, and actually they have gone missing. So I don't know where I put them. So you can, but they're, <laughs> they're in the house. They're somewhere, but uh, somewhere they are, um, but they're just invaluable. So yeah, I mean, you can never they have really too many. Are. And, and those smaller ones are so good for, um, if you have a lot of perennials and you do a lot of deadheading mm-hmm. or pruning on your perennials, they're just great for that. Yeah, absolutely. And they fit in your pocket so well. Mm-hmm. But the, the number sixes are kind of the next step up from that. So you, I can still prune um, shrub mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, just normal, normal everything that you could prune with the, the full-size pruners, but they just fit my hand better. Funny story about um, pruners going missing. <laughs> so um, several years ago, I've, I've had my pair for, oh gosh, 20 years or more. And... Um, 
so I guess that speaks to the durability yes. of the Felcos. But um, several years ago, I was working in the spring out in a, in the front bed in my garden, and I was raking up the leaves, and there were my Felcos <laughs> lying on the ground under the, the leaves that had fallen in the garden. So they'd been out there all winter. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And they were fine. Yes, I was gonna say. Yeah. I'm. I, that's my fear. Is that's where my little ones are? <laughs> is they're outside? Oh, when no. I was, I'm well, like, yeah, I know. I'm. Uh, kind I of hope a, you find them. Thank too. you. Yeah, me too. So definitely recommend yeah. that uh, to our listeners. Uh, if you have a gardener in your life, you cannot, absolutely cannot go wrong uh, with uh, fel- with uh, Felco pruners. Another pair of nice pruners. That's right. That's right. Yes. No one will ever. They probably won't get returned. Even That's right. If they have them already. That's right. They <laughs> never will. Like, yeah, it's one of those things that yeah, no one can have too many of them. And uh, and, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, know. something else I have several of actually mm-hmm. is is a soil knife. Oh, okay. Uh, a soil knife is uh, it's a narrow trowel with a a very sharp blade on it. And uh, do do you all use those? I don't. A friend, I think I just asked for one. Is it similar to, there's one called a hori hori knife. Is that similar? Yes. Yes. It is similar to that. Yes. Very similar. That is what I asked uh, for Christmas. (laughs) So it's perfect for, um, say, working in containers because it's it's narrower than your average trowel. Mm -hmm. And it's also, it has, uh, the one I have has a serrated, one one side is serrated and it's very sharp. So if you're... um, uh, cutting twine you can just slice that Mm -hmm. or if you need to cut some roots off of a plant when you're planting a new shrub or something and you need to kind of clean it up a little bit you can just slice those right off with the edge of your knife um be careful with the leather gloves i have actually Uh. sliced (laughs) through my gloves before too um luckily not not in my hand so i guess that's a an advertisement for wearing gloves yes yes Um, for sure (laughs) But uh, I really, and I have a few of these, and I've lost a few over the years mm-hmm. as well. Same way. The one I have has a red handle, which I guess is really handy for yes. all tools to have mm-hmm. red handles. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Easier to find when you leave them lying around outside. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So this one that you've listed in the article is just called a soil <coughs> knife. Yes. And it's by, is it, the, I don't see the company listed, is it by a particular... Um, brand? The one we use is the A.M. Leonard. Okay. Um, uh, I just clicked through to the Amazon link to that, and it looked like they're out of stock right now Ooh. on Amazon. But A.M. Leonard is another company, uh, tool company, that uh, I'm sure they have it. I didn't visit their website, but, yes, they. Uh, that's a handy one. And this one, as you can, I don't know if, if, if you visit our website, you'll see a photo of it, and uh, you can see that it has uh, measurements right mm-hmm. on the blade. So if you're planting bulbs and you need to kind of try to get uh, a hole that's the correct um, depth, it makes it easy to do that. And there's a little notch on the edge with a, a, sh- a blade, and uh, so that's handy for, again, cutting twine and that okay. sort of thing. Excellent. So, yeah. So that's um, definitely a handy tool that uh, it is, and the pre- and it's not too expensive. You know, around twenty dollars ish. Mm-hmm. It's not okay. bad. Okay. Great Perfect. addition, Kristen. I think I'm just going to interrupt quickly. Um, Madden has written in um, a question comment. Uh, hello, Joanne and Matthew. Merry Christmas to you and your families. Wow, just in time for Christmas. Great radio show. I was wondering what to get uh, for the green thumb in my family, and you hit the nail on the head hard thank you for your advice tonight um so yeah thanks again Kristen, yeah. for joining us and so if you are just tuning in um we are talking with uh kristen bean sullivan uh executive uh, managing editor of garden gate magazine and we're talking about what to get uh, all those, you know, those green thumbs, those gardeners in your life. And we're actually reviewing a specific article. So you can go to uh, GardengateMagazine.com. And it is the Gifts for Gardeners article. that We're going down the list. And, and uh, Kristen is just sharing some of their her and her staff's favorites, must-haves, and fun gifts to get for, um, for the gardener in your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you want to join the conversation, you want to say hi to Kristen, write in, ask a question about the magazine in studio 101 at gmail.com. And just on the heels of that little plug, Paul writes in, hello down the garden path. Love your show. Hoping all of you have a happy holidays. Uh, what 
uh, is this a free magazine offer for Garden Gate that I see online? Is it digital or hard copy? Thank you. So I don't know if you can uh, answer that, Kristen, or... Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I believe that if you are in the United States, it's a hard copy. Okay. And in mm. Canada, it's a digital copy for the free uh, preview issue. Wonderful. Very nice. Is that, does that sound right? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Paul, for seeing. So obviously he's gone to your website based on the show. So that's wonderful, yes, Kristen. thanks for checking it out. Yeah, <laughs> and that's great. So uh, it's always good to get something for free. So uh, if you're in yes. the U.S., Paul, that your magazine will come to you. And in Canada, it would be a digital copy. And so many magazines yeah, have gone digital, haven't they? Yes. Yep. That definitely seems to be the way uh, there's more and more available digitally these days. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, uh, we do have a free weekly newsletter called Garden Gate Notes that uh, you could uh, sign up for and hear from us every week. Um, things like our favorite gift ideas for, <laughs> for uh, gardeners or uh, what you should be, uh, you know, our favorite shade plants that are blooming right now or um, our favorite new plants or techniques for um, deadheading um, your plants right now, that sort of thing. So it's sort of timely information and uh, also inspirational information Excellent. for gardeners. Well, thank you. That's wonderful. So I hope our listeners can go on, on the gardengate.com uh, gardengatemagazine.com gardengate gardengatemagazine.com <laughs> and sign up for their newsletter for your newsletter wonderful yeah so um, what else do you have on yeah. our, your list yeah so um i sort of divided some of my thoughts into different kinds of different kinds of people that you might be shopping for and i told you about a few sort of stocking stuffers smaller ideas that i had there um i always also like to give um handmade gifts, of course, to people if I can. And uh, one, speaking of GardenGateMagazine.com, we have a really popular article on the website right now um, that shows you how to make something called kokodama. Ooh. And a kokodama mm -hmm. is a, um, a ball of sort of clay and soil with um, sphagnum moss wrapped around it and then a plant planted in the middle of it, and then you wrap it in uh, twine or decorative uh, string and hang it. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a, a gift from gardeners and also would be a great, a great gift to a gardener. And we have a video and a step-by-step -step article if you're interested in making a gift for someone. Okay. Um, that would be something you might check out on uh, GardenGateMagazine.com. And then, of course, I always, are you, are you uh, canners? Do you give salsa and jam and pickles and those sorts of things? No, unfortunately. I Do you? totally want to get into that, uh, me, but me and mom have not yet done that. No, <laughs> we will. Yeah, so uh, I uh, just in the last few years have started doing more canning. I was always a little intimidated by mm -hmm. that process. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, We're all we, afraid uh, to poison someone, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but... Uh, so we have lots of salsa coming out of our house this year. So that's that's a good one. A bag of chips and a jar of homemade salt, homemade salsa seems to be. I always, I always like to give that, or mm -hmm. I always like to get that, of mm -hmm. course. And yeah. now have started giving them. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Are you are you people who um, give um, ornaments? to people. I, I have to say, I actually am not someone who typically gives garden art because I feel like that's kind of a personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Choice? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it is. I mean, it unless you see something that is, you know, it's that what that person would want, you know? Yes. Um, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so, sometimes you just know. Yes. You see it. And yeah. It's it's clear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also having received some of that some from sometimes I'm not always sure what, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, Where to put it or what the person was thinking, yeah. right? So yeah, so garden art can be you know, a very personal thing. It's tricky. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is tricky sometimes. But a tool, they can, I, I don't know, I'm just, a, I also just like to get and give practical gifts. Yes. Maybe I'm, I don't yes. know, that's not everyone. But um, anyway, so handmade things, of course, are always, always fun. And, um, and a, an ornament that a friend made, I would, of course, really love to get that, mm -hmm. usually. Um, but, uh, so maybe you have some new gardeners in your life uh, who, um, could use some help. And 
any of these tools that we mentioned here, I think, would be great for a new gardener, especially the soil knife and a pair of good pruners. Mm -hmm. and like we said, anyone can use those That's from right. beginners to experienced gardeners. Um, I've always found books to be helpful, too. And one book that I've returned to over and over again is the um, American Horticultural Society Encyclopedia of Gardening. Mm. And uh, that's just one of those great reference books that has something uh, about almost any topic you can think of. But um, another book in that sim same line that we mentioned in the um, article on our website is their book about pro plant propagation. And that's great if you're looking at uh, learning how to start seeds or take some cuttings um, of a plant. And uh, that's, it's a great reference book for a, a gardener who um, would like to get into that. Excellent. Um, of course, it's always a great idea to give a gift card mm -hmm. <laughs> to a yes. local garden center. Right. Um, that's always something that um, any gardener can appreciate and have fun with later. Right. I would think the plant um, propagation one would be also very good because I know um, every a lot of people are g really getting into vegetable gardening specifically, right? And yes, wanting to start that seeds. That's and so popular right yeah, now. Yeah. And I think... And so the, mm -hmm. the seed starting can be really useful. Yeah, I think so too because I think that's the harder part of veg. I mean, going and buying the already grown veg, you know, small vegetables from the nursery and planting those is, you know, often mm -hmm. everybody's first step, but I think everybody likes the idea of trying to grow, start them in, especially the people that really want to start, you know, gardening in February, March, right? Yes, um, yes that's right. So, and that's a little trickier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a lot more um, sort of commitment and time to start your own seeds indoors, especially if you need to start early like that. Um, there, uh, yeah, so it's, it's helpful and there's all sorts of things that, um, you know, learning what, which products work best, which kinds of grow lights and how, how far from the plants you should have them and what systems work best to keep your new seedlings watered because it's, uh, that's a real commitment, um, to keep them watered. Uh, it's a daily, <laughs> a daily commitment, uh, uh, to keep an eye on things. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, There's and lots of technical information there. Yeah, and I love the idea of uh, gift cards too because I think it's really important to support your local garden centers. Like a lot of them yeah. tend to be, you know, whether it's U.S. or Canada, right? They're small, independent exactly. family, sometimes often family run, um, and yes. it's and they're vital to our community. So as much as the big box stores are carrying some things. Uh, you know, really, I think um, the true gardeners, you know, really love and depend on uh, on the local garden centers and nurseries. So, uh, so definitely support them. I agree, and there's you you can get um, so much information and help from a local garden center that you can't always get uh, from a, a larger sort of corporation. Um, and uh, there there are great people that work both you know, in both environments, but at the local garden center, um, you just, you really get that sort of personal attention and uh, personal investment. So I, I think investing, like you said, investing in your community businesses is a great, a great thing to do. Um, so uh, have you, do you all have amaryllis going this year? I do. I have two of them going. How about you, Matthew? I just have one. You have one? Yeah. <laughs> I need to get mine out of my basement. <laughs> oh, you, you overwinter them, so I'm not brave enough to try. Yeah, so uh, I um, have had great luck the last few years uh, just putting them out on my patio for the summer and then pulling them into the basement when the... Um, when I'm bringing everything else in okay. and letting them go dormant. And then, you know, then they bloom again Excellent. when I remember to pull them up. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh, that's Might good. not be for Christmas this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I better go check on that. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, were you going to say, because amaryllis are great. They're great little gifts, aren't they? They are. Yes, that's a great gift idea. And sometimes it seems like maybe a sort of a, a cliché. For gardeners, but yeah. I don't know. I still appreciate it. I don't even care. Mm -hmm. I think they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And I think they're also great for kids. So I think if there's like a keen little young gardener in your life, um, getting one of those little kits uh, for Christmas, you know, yes, it wouldn't be blooming yes. at Christmas, but I mean, I think because it's simple, right? There's a little bag of soil, there's a little pot, and there's the bulb. And so it's a simple task for them to plant. 
and yeah, um and you know, it's a bit of patience waiting for the first sign of life, but then it's really cool, isn't it? It really is. And actually, there, um, it's close. It's as close to instant gratification mm-hmm. as you can get in gardening, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you true. know, they they take off pretty quickly, a lot a lot quicker than if you were starting seeds, you know, in the spring. Right. And so, um, yeah, I think that's a really rewarding, uh, fun thing to do, and especially if you can keep it from year to year. Yeah, so definitely. That's uh, that's really really great. Speaking of kids, uh, I have a couple of books that. Uh, I just love for kids, and they are um, to what the first one is called the life cycles of butterflies, Ooh. and the second one is called the secret lives of backyard bugs. Okay, and uh, the cool thing about both of these books is that they include photographs of. Um, we'll start with the butterflies, but it's the same for other insects in the other book. But they they include um, photographs of the insect at every stage of its life cycle. And so you will see the egg of a particular butterfly, and then you see several instars of its caterpillar, and then you can see what the butterfly looks like. So if you're out looking and you see a caterpillar, you know, sometimes you just don't know what that caterpillar uh, will be turning into. Oh. And with this book, it's just such a great reference. I, I just love this book and have purchased it for, well, actually, my kids had it when mm-hmm. they were younger, and they still do, actually. And uh, I ended up purchasing it for um, their classrooms at school. Oh, wonderful. Be- when they were in elementary school, mm-hmm. because it was just so um, informative. I've, I've just never seen such complete photography of you know, from start to finish, um, with both butterflies and, uh, other insects as well, actually. It's just really, really interesting. Oh, wonderful. So can you repeat the name of the books again? So Secret Life of... Yes, of course. The, the one is called The Secret Lives of Backyard Bugs. Okay. And the other is called The Life Cycles of Butterflies. Excellent. And neither one of those is, happens to be <laughs> in the article we've been talking about <laughs> online, but that was just sort of an extra. Um, there are several great book recommendations on on this article mm-hmm. um, on our website as well. Um, but that one is one that I particularly like for kids, actually. Wonderful, especially. wonderful. But me too. I yeah, think it's interesting. I think so too. And I think even new gardeners, people are you know interested in pollinators and in learning on what's alive in their garden. Um, exactly. if, if there's great photos, then I think that's a, that's a really uh, great uh, gift. Yeah, and sometimes you, you see an insect in your garden, and I mean, I think people are more in tune with pollinators and all the mm-hmm. benefits that uh, they have now, and so people maybe aren't as quick to um, think ill of insects in their gardens these days, but you know, I, I just thought all bugs were bad when I started gardening, mm-hmm. and I didn't really think about it. Yeah, you know, I, or I maybe I thought bugs were either bad or sort of neutral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't think about the positive effects necessarily, and uh, so you know, this helps you decide: is this an, an insect I need to be worried about, or is this um, one that is actually helping mm-hmm. and has a real um, benefit? Uh, and and at different stages, you know, I didn't know what ladybug. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, larva looked right. like yes for the longest time yeah and uh, so it's interesting mm-hmm. no that is great um, anyway so there's the, a couple of books <coughs> excuse me um, I would also recommend getting um, gloves for kids and again if you can get if you can find a company that sells them in a range of sizes um, that really helps and uh, so women's work and uh, some of these other, um, get, I, I advocate getting real tools and real gloves for uh, kids and yes. not just the kid stuff. kind of the, yeah. the ones that look like toys. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I think so. Because I think it, yeah, it grows with them, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my kids always love to, uh, there, but there's certain things they always liked to do and still actually prefer to do. No one likes to weed, but um <laughs> including me mostly, but, um, but the kids, my kids always love to plant, of course, and if they can cut something, they love to cut. <laughs> ah, that's right. That's right. And I think kids like having toys that or having things, tools that look similar to adults, right? Versus a toy. Yes. So I think yes, that's, that's a, exactly right. Yeah, so, think, so 
So I think just scaled down real tools, mm-hmm. not not um, like again toy toys. tools, yes. the ones that don't really do. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't really do the job as well. Excellent. I think, um, and I, I let my kids use pruners with supervision when they were small mm-hmm. and uh, let them use the soil knife with supervision mm-hmm. when they were smaller. Um, and I, I think that's, that's um, helpful if they have their own tools that fit them. I don't know. Uh, there are lots of uh, rakes that are sort of that smaller size mm-hmm. and uh, that work really well for children to use, much more unwe- much less unwieldy than a giant leaf rake would right. be for a, a child, a smaller person. But also, I like to use the smaller rakes um, when getting in between shrubs, for example, mm-hmm. and uh, cleaning out uh, perennial beds. And in fact, we had a, um, a telescoping um, metal rake that we recommend on our um, on our gift guide that is really handy because you can adjust the width of the rake. So for a smaller person or for a larger person, you can scale it to fit uh, the size of the person, but also um, you can scale it to fit the size of the job. So you can um, slide the, there's a lever on the handle that you can slide up and down and the weight, the rake will get wider or narrower depending on where you position the lever. Oh, wonderful. And I think that would be I great really like for, them. yeah, oh, it's all really great for portable, too, because sometimes if I'm going to clients' homes, you know, I'm, ne- I'm having to put the tools in the car, that type of thing. So this is another feature. It's a little bit more um, portable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's really helpful for yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so and I love that. And, and for storage. Um, so, yeah, portability, storage. Mm-hmm. Um, it fits the size of the job. And the person. Perfect. So that's uh, that's a handy tool that uh, we we like around here. Excellent. And uh, um, we find that really useful. All um, right. So that's once again so, just to let everybody know that's called the telescopic metal rake. Yes. Yep. That is one of the things that we uh, mentioned in our website. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, let's see here. What else? Oh, Kristen, so, just as um, we reach the, the last kind of fifteen minutes, we do have a few email people who have written in, or some listeners who have written in. Uh, oh, Ray Bigler says, uh, another year's almost gone by, and we would uh, like to thank Down the Garden Path and all your advice throughout the year. I love the show tonight. Uh, such great tips and ideas. Looking forward to another growing season next year. Uh, and all of the advice uh, to help us keep it looking beautiful. Merry Christmas to all of you, writes in Ray. And then, oh, oh thank and you. Sharon Great. writes in. Oh, uh, Sharon writes in. Hi, I see that Garden Gate offers the complete library publication of their magazine online. Is this the USB offer? Uh, can you please explain? Thank you. Yeah, so that is available either as a USB or as a, um, just strictly online. So you could access it through your uh, computer through the through through the web. Oh, very nice. I didn't know that there was the yeah. library, so I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think it's yeah. great. Thank you, everybody, for going and checking out GardenGateMagazine.com. Yes. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, the magazine has been around since 1995, and so that would be for every issue that we've published since then. Wow. And uh, it's nice because it's searchable so if you have them in print you can thumb through them to find what you need but this is much faster much faster (laughs) definitely definitely well jennifer yes yeah another another person Jennifer, that ties right into Jennifer's uh, comment. Uh, hello, first time listener from Manhattan, NYC. Uh, just went to your guest's website. It is incredible. Uh, we'll be ordering some stuff for tomorrow. Thanks for the tips and the great ideas. So, oh, thank you. Thanks, yeah, for, so thanks thank, for listening. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer, very much for listening. First time. So, w- welcome to Down the Garden Path. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing the great wonderful thing about the radio show and podcast is listeners can listen to us everywhere uh, much like they can access your website from everywhere right Kristen right so uh yes. so that's wonderful well, I'm so glad to uh to hear from you here wonderful so do you have some bigger gift ideas or what are a couple more before we wrap up I know time always just flies doesn't it on the radio oh. It does. You know, I, I didn't know how quickly it would go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
we have a couple of uh, larger ticket items on our um, article and that we uh, on our website and one of them is something that I mean not everyone needs one of these but oh we have used it so much at our test garden over the last few years when we've been moving things around and it's called pot wheels and uh -huh. it's a plant it's it's a plant and pot mover and so uh it's sort of it's a dolly okay and i have just a regular dolly at my house that i move heavy bags of you know soil and um, big pots and things around with but this uh this one was uh designed specifically for uh big pots and so it has a much larger um base on it okay. than your typical dolly would have and the wheels are bigger and just the way the the tool is angled, uh, it's just so much easier to carry uh, pots on. And it's a pretty high ticket item at around four hundred dollars. So um, you know you, you probably might want um, to. This is good for someone who needs a lot of has a lot of heavy pots. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but, or it uh, could be something that two something people, that yeah, big family can go in on it together, kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be a great thing. You know, I have a. We have sort of a tool library in our neighborhood. We, we share tools with each other, um, more like table saws and, uh, you know, those kinds of things. But this would be a great thing yeah. <laughs> for the neighborhood to go in on yeah, and, definitely. Uh, and share. So uh, that, that would be something that might be interesting. And then we've been trying out the, the miracle Grow 12 indoor growing system. You might have seen that uh, at your local hardware store um, or uh, home centers this year and uh, it's it's new and uh, it's a hydroponics uh, system so it has this uh, table with a little hydroponics it's like an end table I would okay. say mm -hmm. and then it has a, a little hydroponics uh, system underneath the end table with a, a grow light right above it and uh, it's it's really clever and I was a little skeptical about it but uh, we tried it here in the office and it, we've had fresh greens growing for a few months now here in the office, and it's so easy, and it's just quiet and has been very simple to to keep things going. And I think it's it's plenty for a, a, a couple to be able to have um, fresh greens or herbs through the winter. Wonderful. I love the look of it as, as, as uh, like as an end table, like you said, as opposed to something that's sitting on a, on a countertop and taking up space. It's, exactly. Yeah, it's really... Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, usually those things kind of get relegated to the basement mm -hmm. or, yes. you know, a storage room somewhere, or you just have this kind of not so attractive setup sitting out, but it's, uh, it's, it looks just fine. It's just this little end table with, a with an attractive little, um, container on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that, that could, it would work really well in an apartment or, a. Well, it'd be fine in my living room. For yeah, that matter. yeah. So, I think even an office, yeah. like I could see, you know, having a printer or something on top, and then you've got, uh, you know, you've That's got greens. You know, I think it'd yeah. be wonderful. We like do you have it in our office. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have it in yours, <laughs> but I, I think any type of office. Um, That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. um, so those are those are interesting kind of bigger ticket items. How much does that go for U.S.? Uh, that, that's around three hundred dollars, okay. I believe. So that's still not. So it's you know it's you know. a little bit, but for a piece of furniture mm -hmm. um, and something, if you can get, uh, you know, fresh greens and fresh uh, basil and parsley and and that sort of thing all winter, um, that could be a decent investment yeah. over time. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> One other thing I wanted to make sure I highlighted on the list before we went um, are the um, the muck boots. Ah. Um, I just love these boots. And I'm not, I haven't always been a, a boot wearer, a garden boot wearer, a garden clogs, but right. these, um, these boots are so comfortable. <laughs> I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Oh, good. Um, and they, uh, so they're, the ones that we're featuring in the article are the mid ankle boots, the muckster mid ankle boots, and they come in a whole bunch of different colors and they have this kind of fun pattern on the inside. So you, the photo we have in the article shows it with the pattern folded down, mm -hmm. but you don't have to have that folded down either. I, I don't. I just wear mine up. Okay. And so they they come to about just below mid calf. Okay. And uh, they're very comfortable and they're warm. They were warm in the fall. Uh, 
I didn't wear them in the summer, but for spring and fall work, they, they've been really, really, um, really comfortable and uh, warm. Okay. And Kristen, it says in the article, uh, the, sorry, women's uh, muckster mid-ankle boot, but do they come in the men's as well? That is a good question. I don't know. Ah, Fair enough. <laughs> I, think, I think they do, but let me check. Okay. okay. So <laughs> while you're checking, we have... Uh... I was going to say, speaking of all these wonderful items to buy, uh, Carl writes in, Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, does your guest ship items to Canada? So I know there are a lot of links in the article that are taking you to places like Amazon or, or other companies that are available. But anything yes. that Garden Gate ships specifically, do you ship to Canada as well? Um, Garden Gate uh, does ship to Canada. Um, I believe the subscription is a digital-only subscription in Canada, okay. I believe. Um, but I think all of our other, I think, that would be a good question. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Carl. Um, but you did, Matthew, you did find the magazine at uh, our local store didn't you yeah so carl i i found it at uh my local chapters indigo store um so you can find it there as well mm-hmm. um, on the newsstand yeah uh, on the newsstand the thank news you stand. Yeah. yes yes and yes just thinking about the latest november december issue i do not believe i found a little thing inside to, for a paper prescri- or subscription uh carl as well that's right. But Carl, just to clarify that these items on the Garden Gate magazine's list are not necessarily items that you're, you know, that you're shipping out. Um, that is correct. Right? We're the, not, these yeah. are the things we like. We're yeah. Them. Yeah. So these are just recommendations right. uh, from mm-hmm. the editors and uh, staff at uh, Garden Gate magazine. Yes. Um, so correct. Cody has written in as well. So he also says, hello, Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, we're going to miss you on the evenings that you were not on the air during the holidays. Great show tonight. Uh, it really helps us with last minute shoppers to get a gift for gardeners in our lives. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Cody. Thank you for writing in. Yes, thank you. So, Kristen, as we reach our last less than 10 minutes, <laughs> is there one thing that you'd like to put out there that you are hoping to get in the, your for the garden or just, just in general for Christmas? Oh, for me specifically? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, so I'm looking for recommendations on this, actually. I'm looking for a really great watering can, and I have just been using cheap plastic watering cans for years. Do you have any recommendations? Ooh. Um, our garden center loves the Haas line. Ah, uh, yes. The, yep. Um, I just have the simple Gardena ten dollar yeah <laughs> watering can. Center. Um, they have another one too. Um, uh, I think it's the Collapse, spelled with a Z, watering can, and it kind of ha- it can be dual like a little bucket. So it's like a three or four liter bucket that turns into a watering can or just a bucket. So it's nice to move water around. I like it because I'm in an apartment, so I don't have, mm-hmm. I not always have a spot for that big plastic one mm-hmm. normally. So Collapsible is a good idea. Right. And yeah. I can take that it if I'm camping idea. too. I can use it to out my fire or bring water to the campsite to boil or something like that. So I get multiple That's uses of that too. There you go. So that's my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. I learned something. <laughs> Excellent. And we want to let everybody know so um, you're with, like, you're how they can find you. So pretty much you've got the, the hashtag uh, Garden Gate Magazine for everything, right? So we can find you on web uh, on your website, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, that is twi- true. And Pinterest. And Pinterest and Twitter. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> and even YouTube. And YouTube. Yes, Excellent. that's right. So all of those channels we have... Um, and, and sort of different things on every social media channel. I don't, it's not all the same in every case. Wonderful. Uh, one thing that is really fun about our Instagram feed is that our photo- we have a photographer on staff, and so he, uh, he manages our Instagram feed. So that's really fun because he sort of gives behind the scenes, um, a, lo- a sort of behind the scenes look into what he's doing every day. Or, you know, this time of year, there isn't quite so much of that. But (laughs) in the summer, you can see where he's traveling to and see the gardens he's in and uh, see the projects we're working on. And that's really fun. Mm -hmm. In addition to all the great shots he's taking, you know, throughout the year of just interesting seasonal photos and, uh, you know, great ideas. Wonderful. It's Um, always fun to see behind the scenes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
and it's fun to talk to people that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so that's interesting. And then, of course, yes, Facebook and uh, YouTube. We've been uh, adding lots of videos to our YouTube channel, and again, they're all hashtag um, Garden Gate Magazine. Wonderful. And uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Down the Garden Path. I think this is great um, to have all of these gift ideas. And I love that we've got different pr- uh, price ranges and uh, different gift ideas for uh, any age. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So Merry Christmas to you. Yes. And uh, thank, thank you, you again, once again, for joining us here down the garden path. Same to you. Thank okay. you so much. Bye. Thanks, Kristen. Bye. Well, there you go. So we hope, I think there's something on there for everyone. I know I'm hoping my boys are listening because I definitely <laughs> want that soil knife. And uh, I can always use another Felco pruner oh, and yeah. new gardening gloves because I tend to poke the tips out of mine. Uh, so, yes. So I'm going to check out the ones that they recommended as well because I love the idea of them being leather tipped but kind of breathable at the back of my hand. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of great, great, mm-hmm. cool ideas. Um, yeah. Yeah. What else can you say? Yeah. Well, thank you, so everybody. Many. And if you didn't catch the whole show, then don't forget it will be released in a few days as a podcast. So you can go back, uh, check out the, your favorite podcast app and look for Down the Garden Path and uh, and you can listen to it there. That's right. Um as a couple of you had mentioned, thank you that you are going to miss us, uh, I think Cody was saying, on the evenings, Monday evening. Just so you guys know, we do have one more episode for the 2019 season next week, and we're going to talk about uh, holiday plants and just kind of a uh, wrap-up holiday. Christmas, anything. Christmas, you know, anything. If you've got questions about Christmas trees or Christmas plants or outside you know, Christmas yeah. Whatever, uh, urns, that type of thing. We are going to talk Christmas. We are going to talk Christmas. That's, That's right. So don't forget to join us next week. Um, after that, we are going to take a small break, though. Uh, so everywhere from December 23rd, the Monday, the December 23rd, through and including Monday, January 6th, we will be off uh, the air. So if you need your fix, yes. your favorite podcast app, again, you can always write us here at instudio101 at gmail.com. We really love hearing from all of you uh, at any time. You can always reach us at our own websites and email mm-hmm. addresses uh, directly as well. So you can find me at naturalaffinitydesigns.ca and reach me directly at matthew at naturalaffinitydesigns.ca. And you can find Joanne at uh, downtoearth.ca with the number two. You can find me there and uh, all the links, especially Instagram, Instagram stories. Lately, I'm trying. I'm getting better at Instagram stories, so you can kind of follow along <laughs> uh, with what we're up to there. So, uh, so yeah, That's and we'll right. talk. We've got some exciting things planned for 2020. We do on the podcast, and maybe we'll even talk about them next week. So you're just gonna have to stay tuned. You will indeed. Well, Madden, Paul, Ray, Sharon, Jennifer, Carl, and Cody, thank you so much for writing in and joining the conversation this evening with Kristen. Thank you, Gary, as always, for helping us produce this wonderful podcast and radio show uh, here on the station. And thank you, everyone. We hope you're having um, a wonderful Christmas season, staying warm, happy and healthy. And uh, thank you for tuning in to Down the Garden Path here on Reality Radio 101. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101.